There's been a situation with, with a 10-year-old <laughs> prospective football player, Baby Gronk, okay? We've all heard about this. You've seen it kind of making the rounds, and, and his father, who was the LeVar Ball of child sports players, whatever. Uh, David, as the resident dad on the set right now, mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to pine on in a second, just your thoughts of, of this whole situation. Yeah, I saw a lot of people coming out and saying that this dad is, you know, he's the worst father around and that, you know, he's, he's doing too much is the phrase that I heard a lot. And that may be true. We all know that dad who is living vicariously through their sons because he didn't accomplish a lot at a high, at, at a high level through athletics. And maybe that's the case we're dealing with now. I don't know this family personally, but some of the things that came out was, you know, the father was saying, my son is on a, a workout routine already at 10 years old. He's eating right. He's eating salmon and brown rice, I think it was. And most of all, I have his, um, I have his, uh, his name, image, and likeness pack is like already put together, basically. Like I'm building his brand for him so that he's set no matter if he goes and plays professional athletics or not. So here's what I immediately thought. You know, one of the major problems we're dealing with in America is absentee fathers. And I would rather have a father in the household. I'd rather have a father that's too strict rather than have a father that's too lenient, okay? That's one thing. And I would rather have a father who actually does want to participate in the brand I wanna build in life rather than not participate at all. If that's what's going on here, I think that could be a good thing. And don't even get me started on the food aspect. I mean, you just came back from Paris and you were talking about how much better every other country in the world eats than we do. So if it's just a matter of, hey, you're feeding your son good food instead of letting them eat trash or eat junk food, that's another good thing. So. Yes, I do think that there is an aspect of this where parents, uh, you know, I, I, I want to, I had a strict father. I had a father who pushed me harder than other kids at sports, and that led to me being a Division I athlete. At the same time, if that crosses the boundary where, okay, this guy is just clearly into this more for himself and is utilizing his son as a prop to gain some sort of, um, you know, media attention for himself, then I think that's where it becomes problematic. All right, everybody, we know that Father's Day is coming up. And as I was thinking about what I'm gonna be getting for you know the person in, in my life who plays that role, I thought there's no better gift than black rifle coffee. We know dads are busy, all right? Hell, Cone, you're a dad, you're busy. I know for a fact, I know you mm. as a human. All right, he didn't have always, time, always have time to brew the coffee the traditional way each morning. That's why he's gonna love black rifle coffees Ready to drink can. Ready to drink coffee is perfect for people who need it quickly. Each contains at least 200 milligrams of caffeine and it's available in some of the best flavors you've ever heard about. Vanilla bomb, salted caramel, mocha, and my personal fave, vanilla caramel. All right, Back Rifle Coffee is veteran founded. They're operated by principal men and women who honor those who protect, defend, and support our country. And with every purchase you make, they give back. So stop running out of coffee and sign up for a Coffee Club subscription to have Black Rifle Coffee delivered straight to your door on a schedule. And Coffee Club subscribers receive their high-quality coffee at low prices. So, save money and drink America's coffee. Go to blackriflecoffee.com and use promo code BOOSTER at checkout, and you get 10% off your first-time purchase, or excuse me, one-time purchase or first Coffee Club order. That's blackriflecoffee.com, promo code BOOSTER for 10% off. Uh, we have every single flavor cone, every single flavor. But what's your favorite? This, oh well, it's the 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 either the fool's gold or the silencer smooth or the lava panther or the just black or the beyond black. God, I would I'm say so are probably all my favorite ones. This is the classic Michael Scott win 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 because if you buy this black rifle coffee and use our promo code, you help our show. Check. You support the veterans. Check, and you get caffeinated. Yeah, and you, you get, get the coffee caffeinated. in your body. It's nothing like eating caffeinated. I'm a big headless horseman roast. That's, yeah, that's one of my favorites. A lot of Ichabod in. A little Ichabod crane. No pun intended. Pun intended. My last name being Crane. But great coffee. They defend. They give money to people to defend our country. Yeah, I think I'm gonna buy that coffee. Yeah, I'm gonna live that life. That's exactly right. BlackRifleCoffee.com. Promo code Booster. Wake up with deliciousness. Yeah, and, and look, I think it's a, a much more complicated issue than, than what people on the periphery are making it. And, and I tweeted out, and, and the reason that, that I said I thought he was doing too much was because of the NIL side of it. You know, it, it kind of gave me uh, Spike's dad from Little Giants. Yep. Perhaps. And look, I had a father, played in the NFL, we both did was very strict, not just when it came to sports, but, but in everything and, and the way that we're raised up. And there's a lot of good that goes with that. Nobody's perfect. I'm not a parent yet, so I'm not going to sit here and try and just judge every situation, especially when you mentioned, I don't know this guy personally. I believe his name's Madden, I, I think's his name. Uh, but the, the part that, that I kind of struggle with is, 
you know, we, there's a lot of talk right now about children and, and kind of how they're being used as pawns in certain things. And I really hope, I really hope that this is something that, that this kid who is 10 years old, okay, this, this isn't even a 13-year-old. This isn't even a teen. This isn't even really a pre-teen. This is a 10-year-old kid. And the thing that, that worries me is the NIL part of it. That stuff will take care of itself if the kid is good enough, eventually becomes good enough. That, 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 that is the kind of LeVar Ball part of it that kind of worries me that you are doing this just for the money because I don't think a 10-year-old can sit there and explain to me, hey, daddy, I want to build my brand up and get all this NIL money and understand really what's going about that. I, there's a, a couple parts that I find very intriguing and interesting. I'm not going to say nefarious yet because, again, I don't know the guy and it's got a long way to go. But the, the, the part that I worry about is I, I'm never a fan of, of specialization of children in sports at a super young age. Like saying that, okay, this kid is the next coming in college football. All we're going to do is work, worry about football and that's it. You know, I'm from the school of, hey, play basketball. Play, and any coach will tell you this. Any Division One coach will tell you this. I want you to run track. I want you to play basketball. I want you to play baseball. I want you to do things outside of one sport and specialize in when you're 10 years old. But it's, it's and I get building a brand. And brands equal money. And people want to make money. I just feel like it's so early and that this kid is going to get burnt out. The amount of people that, I played travel ball when I was 19 years old. You know, we did, he did too. We traveled around the South and played it. And there were some kids that parents, they just specialized in baseball. And by the time those kids got to middle school, half of them were so burned out and so sick of it that they hated it. You went from something that you loved to something that you hated. And that's my worry for this kid. Yeah, you know, the dads came out and said, you know, uh, he wants to make it in football, but even if he doesn't make it in football, he wants to set his son up for success. Um, right now, he has over 320,000 followers on Instagram, I believe, hang out with Shaq, Mark Wahlberg, Livy Dunn from LSU. I don't really know, I don't really know why, what's the dad's why, right? Is it money or is it something that his son wants? Um, I don't think we'll know to, uh, until a certain amount of time, but I'm not, there's always a line, but I'm not gonna blame a dad who's trying to get his son out there, right? Especially at a young age, just could be worse things. It's back to what you were saying, David. I mean, the kid's eating right. I mean, the, uh, when it comes to parents using their kids, if this, if, if this parent is using his kid to, to get amount of money for him, then yeah, that's one thing. But I'm more worried about the kid. Right, what, what, what does the kid want to do? How much you, we can say whatever, baby, Gronk, we'll see, we'll know in a couple years if this kid's special or not. He's way too young, the kid's 10 years old. But I can respect it to a certain level of getting your son's name out there. Hell, uh, the LeVar Ball, and uh, as crazy as it is, look at his sons. Mm -hmm. you know, two of them made it to the NBA. One was playing in the European League. I don't think he's playing anymore. So there's a line to it for sure. Selling out is one thing. Using your son is one thing. But getting your son's name known, all right, that I, I can understand it. When it comes, he wants him to be a millionaire, whether with football or without football. It might not always be pretty, and I don't think it always will be. The way he's going about it, could he do things better? For sure. But there's worse things in the world right now that are happening to kids than uh, Madden's dad, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one area that gives me pause is the weightlifting, and you guys know this as well as anyone, there is a certain age, like younger than that, you don't need to be lifting heavy weights. It stunts your growth. You will stunt your growth. And so, I again, I don't know what his workout routine is. Uh, our friend Jim Nagy put out an interesting post on this where he says mm -hmm. football, more than any other sport, is, is your success there is based on your biology. Mm -hmm. There's someone who won't play football until, the, until their junior year of high school who will make it to the NFL. Mm -hmm. This kid can start, you can have had a plan for this kid to play in the NFL before he was born. My dad did too, and it's still not happened if the biology isn't there because it's not a specialized thing that you can just do 10 million times and get better at like swinging a golf club or even even hitting a baseball. So that's just one interesting thing I saw on the football side of it. But in terms of building a brand, I mean, it, like marketing matters. We've seen that. Like the brand that you build can dictate more than any other time in history, especially at the collegiate level of athletics, how much revenue you can drive for yourself and what sort of brand you can build long term. It's working. Yeah. Yeah, no, and it's working. We're talking about it right now. You, you've seen it kind of, you know, I know Will Compton came out and had some interesting things to, uh, to say about the, the father, but I'm not going to judge somebody that I, that I don't know personally. We'd love to have uh, Baby Gronk and his father on to, to talk about this and sit down and kind of really, you know, dive into what's going on. But if, if we're just going to look at brand awareness alone, mission's already accomplished. And he's I guess here's one way I want to, like, wrap it up. I, you know, I wish we would criticize 
dads who aren't, aren't in their there. kids' yes. lives yes. as much as we are yes. someone who's like trying to set his son yes. up for success. Definitely. <laughs> I, I would much rather, I would much rather, like you said, if I was the 10 year old, have my dad who was too over the top mm -hmm. and he was still there than to not have a father there. And you can just look at the statistics and you know what's going on in the nuclear family right now is embarrassing in this country anyway. But uh, no, I, I think there's a lot to dissect in here. So in the comments, tell us what you think about the whole Baby Gronk situation. And like I said, the invitation is there for Baby Gronk and his dad to come on, we'd love to sit down with them. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking us out. If you didn't know, we do a live sports show the way you like it, you know, where it's mainly about sports and common sense. Uh, from 6.30 to 8 a.m. Central, that's 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern. Come join us. We take live calls Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We have a live chat, aka the Booster Club or the Trust Tree, where you can come under the wing and into our hearts. So make sure you subscribe, turn that notification bell on, and hit that like button. We really appreciate it.